Here's a quick video that I hope helps somebody pass a 2G titanium weld test. Let's do it. We're using 6AL4V titanium for the test metal today. And the first thing, the very first thing, is get it degreased, get it wiped down with acetone, then file the sheared edge, preferably with a brand new file. When you think you filed it enough, file it a little bit more. Then use a brand new stainless steel, austenitic stainless steel, fine bristle brush. And then one final wipe down before you put it in the fixture. Then that's it. I did a video recently about the three worst things you can do when TIG welding titanium and one of them is not using a gas lens cup, just using a standard cup. They won't cut it on titanium. Might be obvious to some people, but it's worth noting. Titanium loves argon, so I'm using this oversized flood cup from Furic. He calls it a sippy BBW. It's made from thermoplastic. I'm going to need about 40 CFH on the cup and I've got about 15 to 20 on the fixture. I'm setting my machine at 49 amps, but I'm using the foot pedal. Post flow, typically on titanium, I might run it all the way up to the max, but that would be for a part welded outside of a fixture. My fixture's got chill blocks on it. It's gonna pull the heat out rapidly. I don't need that much post flow. So I'm gonna set it about 10. I'm gonna clean the filler wire and check this out. This is a problem. This filler wire came to me. I ordered it online with rubber bands on it. That is a horrible idea, especially for titanium filler metal. It, it, over time, it just kind of bonds itself to the filler wire. It's hard to get all that gum off of there, so I'm just gonna snip it off on the piece that I'm using. I could probably wipe and wipe and get it off, but I don't wanna waste time. I'd rather waste a few inches of titanium rod. All this cleaning might seem like overkill, but it is what it is when it comes to titanium. If you don't clean it, if you don't take that extra care, especially cleaning that sheared edge, especially wiping it down with acetone before you do anything, and then a final wipe before you put it in the fixture, then don't put any acetone on it. If you don't do these things properly, you wind up with something like this. This is a typical x-ray negative of a titanium joint that was not cleaned properly. Porosity is common in titanium and it's very common on the 2G test. But let's get back to welding. I've got the piece locked down in the fixture. Time to get a tack on each end. It's nice to have a low amp start machine. This one starts at five amps, which is really nice for these end tacks. You might notice on this next tack, I add just a, a little extra drop of filler metal. I get it joined together and then I add just a little bit of extra filler metal and that gives me a little leeway welding to and welding from without melting the end away. You really need to get into the habit of holding your torch still while your post flow argon times out. For this test, I'm using a 045 commercially pure filler metal. I'd kind of like one size up just for the rigidity because titanium is so sticky that it's good to have a rigid filler oh, metal. Okay. A 045 kind of tends to flop around a little bit especially with me, you'll see it flop here. And right here, it's really sticky when it's hot, so it tries to stick to the base metal. So if you just move forward and then kind of tug on it, sometimes it'll come loose. I'm trying to feed it right under the arc into the fluid part of the puddle there so it won't stick. If you slip it in there, like try to scoot it in there against the base metal, it's, it'll stick every time and it'll just give you fits. One thing that I found out helps a lot on a 2G test like this is pointing that electrode upward a little bit and having a little bit of extra argon flow to compensate for argon being heavy. There's a couple of reasons to use a large cup like this. Number one is obvious that it, it, you just need it for the gas coverage on titanium because there are color requirements, discoloration requirements. But it does a couple of more things. It gives you a little bit of leeway as far as to how far you can come out of the arc with the tip of that rod. You don't want on any metal, really, you don't want to oxidize the tip of that rod, but it's especially important on titanium. So if the rod flips around a little bit on you, you'll still be in the argon envelope. And you can see it's kind of floppy here. All right, we're coming right up to the end. It's sticking on me, but I'm just staying the course. That little extra dab on that tack is giving me a little freedom here to melt into it and not blow the end away as I taper off slowly on the amperage. And again, I'm going to hold my cup still while that post flow argon continues to run and times out. And now I got a pretty good silver weld. I've got some discoloration right where the chill bars meet 
but most codes allow for it if it's that far away from the toe of the weld. Plenty of room for improvement here, but I'm going to call it good and move on to the next video. Here's a good reason to use a sippy cup. Helpy Helperton always finds a way of tripping over your torch cable, and if that's a glass cup or a ceramic cup, it may or may not survive. This one will survive. It's a version of his BBW that's made from thermoplastic so that it won't break when it gets knocked off the bench. If that's attractive to you, if you're a bike builder or you know you want a, you want a cup that you just don't want to break it, check it out. Go to weldmonger.com. We'd be happy to help you. See you next time. The Furic BBW Sippy Cup is something that we have added recently to the Weldmonger store, but we're also adding lots of different new products. The store is how I pay for these videos, and we do appreciate your support. Hey, if you're still hanging around here, enjoy these tight little arc shots. I worked hard to get them. They're not that easy to do, but they are completely worth the effort if I can help somebody pass a test, level up, get a better job, get a raise, improve their life.